Hey everybody, Jay Widener here, and we are back with Reality Check. I want you guys to uh, subscribe and share and pass it on because, as you know, the algorithms work against people like me and our shows, like ours. And um, I've got Robert Phoenix back today. We're going to talk about <clears throat> what we were talking about the last time, which is the uh, Pluto-Saturn conjunction. We were about a month before it. Um, and so what happened is, is that I, 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 I got worried after our last show and I decided that I would take my last international trip. So Sharon and I went to Costa Rica on the 5th of January and we got back around the 20th and I fully expected the world to be hitting the wall when I got back and nothing was going on. And so I thought, oh, maybe, you know, Robert isn't going to be right about this. So everything's going to be fine. And we don't, we can relax. Little did I know that halfway across the globe at that very moment was a, uh, the beginning of the pandemic. And, and uh, now we are into it for what, two months now. Yeah, mm -hmm. two months we're into the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And it's been the absolute craziest two months that I've ever seen in my life. And I think <clears throat> we are heading towards some kind of significant um, human historical event, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So um, just want to do one last thing before we go to our conversation. Robert, I got this book after our last conversation, it's photographs of San Francisco in the 1850s. Mm -hmm. And um, it is amazing. The population is only 10,000 people at the end of 1859. Look at these. Look at this. And they, cre they create that, right? Look at that build out. And there's and, and, and Cliff High will tell me, well, no, you're wrong. They uh, there were twenty thousand Chinese there that they could have hired as laborers. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, the the census is only ten thousand, so I don't know. But even if you had twenty thousand Chinese working right, and and so maybe you could do a build out like that in ten years or less than ten years. But here's the thing that's really interesting about these photographs. You don't see any buildings being constructed. There's no scaffolding going up on any buildings. There's nobody working. There's no ladders anywhere. I've looked at all these pictures in this book and I can't find a building being built in the biggest build out probably in American history. Right? Right, 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 right. I mean, you just, you just add everything up and the numbers, they just don't equate. And if people want to get a real a uh, glance at a real gold rush town and a real gold rush build out. Look at Deadwood, right? Look, look at the, look at the architecture of the buildings of Deadwood. Or they're, they're basically wooden shacks. That's what a gold rush town looks like. Uh, uh, Google image, Crestone, Colorado, the town right nearby my ranch here. And, and it's a mining town. And look at those buildings. They were thrown up really fast. They've had to be in constant state of repair just to keep them going. They're useless. Um, and uh, you can just see that it was just done really fast. And then they were intended to get all the gold they could and then get the hell out. And uh, that's exactly what happened. And yes. Yeah, it's, it's not about the magisterial kind of quality of the architecture that you see in San Francisco. And, and, and you know, and I guess somebody could make a uh, an argument that that it was the gold of the gold rush that supplied all the money to theoretically pay these Chinese laborers. But why would they do that? Why wouldn't they just pocket the gold and just have their own kind of fortune? Why would they? Why would they spend it in such such an ostentatious fashion? And also, I mean, the the architecture that we're looking at, not the houses, the Elizabethan houses so much, but the, uh, the buildings themselves. Um, you, you're not gonna use, um, hang on here, you're not gonna use unskilled labor to build this building. Right. This building took skilled labor. People who That's right. And write and do mathematics and geometry. And um, here's the one that really grabs me. Supposedly all these buildings I'm showing you burned in the fire. Right, supposedly. Yep. That building. Look at that. Absolutely. And in fact, if you go out, they used to have a very similar looking building. It was the Sutro Baths and the Sutro yeah. Cliff House. Yep. And, and, I, and I was, when I lived in San Francisco in the Bay Area, 
uh, that was a place where I would have a pilgrimage. I would go there because it was right on the coast, and I walked around those ruins all the time. I was totally drawn to that place. Same here. And you go, go out to the, what was the name of the pool? Um, the the suit. The Sutra Baths. I mean, that was the, Baths, right. yeah, and that was, the, you know, and they had a salt pool and then they had, they had a, um, um, a regular pool and a warm pool. I mean, it was tremendous. And they had not only that, but they had a, like a museum and they had all these artifacts in the museum and that burned down in the, in the 1960s. And my old man, uh, he used to go there that like that stuck around for a while. He used to go there in the fifties and they turned it into an ice skating rink. Yep. So people would go there to go ice skating. But if you go back and look at those pictures of, of that place, it is, it is amazing. It, it is palatial. And theoretically, like that was Adolf Sutro's um, um, gift. And people don't know who Adolf Sutro theoretically was. He was uh, German and he was a, an engineer. And supposedly he was the guy that helped to keep the, the mine shafts from collapsing in Nevada to get the silver out. Right. But if you look at everything that was happening in, you know, kind of that Victorian period of San Francisco, it just doesn't it doesn't equate like they had a rail line that went all the way up from downtown that allowed you to go out to the baths. I mean, the, the build out is just tremendous and it just doesn't fit the time scale. It, it is just it doesn't. And, um, you know, and the thing is, is that because of this show, I've had a lot of people from other cities small cities, big cities in the United States. And they're, they're coming up with their own books like this book uh, of because of, photography happened to just coincide with this, all of this. So it becomes, you know, we now have visual evidence. And again, we see the same thing. We see a huge build out, no people and uh, over and over in all these different cities. So it's something to look at. I am going to go to San Francisco again. I used to live there, of course, same time that you did back in the punk rock days and uh, it was a great town man it was so it's totally fun. great it was one of the best places to be in the world at that time oh my god it was so much fun so I much fun so yeah. much fun and, and the nine and the niners were good too then right, right. that's right yeah. they were winning the super bowls yeah and, uh, joe montana and all that so it was and also it was um it was it, it, at that time san francisco refused to be gentrified it since has been gentrified, but at that time there was like a real struggle to make sure that the artistic communities were uh, were were safe and they could pay the rent and and everything. But now the uppies took over in the eighties, late eighties, and yeah, that all changed when Willie Brown became mayor. Yep, and he he basically legislated any kind of um, artistic or creative spirit right out of that city. And he's and, the guy. And made, yeah, go ahead. And just made deals, made deals with his, with his, uh, with his buddies, right? Isn't it interesting that both Oakland and San Francisco had mayors with the last name of Brown? Yeah, it is. And then the governor also, had, um, who was the same mayor. But um, also, uh, a, a little unknown fact is that Willie Brown told the San Francisco Chronicle on September twelfth, two thousand one, that he was going to fly to. New York on September 11th, but he got a call on September 10th from someone in the State Department telling him not to fly. So that's right. Yep, yep. That's one of those little buried facts about 9/11. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is a really good segue, Jay, to what we're going to yep. be talking about and this whole idea of the reset. Uh, and I don't think that there's any. Um, it's not a coincidence that you're bringing this up about San Francisco. And people are starting to become aware of this other reality, this other historical timeline. And as we kind of become more aware of this, guess what we're seeing now? We're seeing the next reset being put into place. Absolutely. That's what's going on here. It's actually astonishing to watch. And um, I don't know in some ways. Um, well, my wife now thinks I'm a genius. <laughs> the first That's funny. Time, yeah, she That's... she actually walked into our pantry and saw all of my food supplies and water and everything and she finally came to her why the hell I was doing all of this prepping, right? And um and so we're safe and we're quarantined and everything, but uh, and of course I live in the middle of nowhere, so I don't really have to worry about it. Right. But uh um and a lot of people don't seem to be worried and i'm worried about those people because we don't know what we're dealing with 
I, I think I think uh, I think some some concern is warranted. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I have a lot of theories about kind of what's going on, uh, and and I and I think that the biggest threat that coronavirus um, has in store or or can can deliver is that it's a mind virus. It is not necessarily a body virus because there's there's we, there are things about this that we know and we don't know. There are people that have recovered from it. Um, there have been fatalities, but if you look at the time scale and you look at the projections, like you know, based on what happened in Wuhan, China, an eighth of Washington should be dead by now, and it's not. They're not right. Nobody's really stepping back and kind of looking at these very salient pieces. And there are actually people that have recovered from these terrible symptoms. I think I had a version of it in November. I was incredibly sick, really, really sick, more sick than I've been in quite a long time. It took me about two weeks to recover, but I did. And now we have a state of emergency. The entire Western world is on lockdown now, right? And what's really interesting is that China is getting back online. And I just I just saw a, a, a news story that uh, Apple has decided to close everything retail wise around the world, except China. They've got stores open in China. Apple has. So it's really interesting. It's like the switch has been flipped and China, China is now engaged in full time, 24 seven capitalist trading inside of its own borders. While the West has been um, essentially quarantined in some kind of Soviet style blockade where all, everything is canceled. This is a really interesting kind of point that I think people are not beginning to wrap their heads around. Yeah, that is quite amazing. And um, the economic effects are going to be uh, felt for a long, long time. And uh, I, 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 in a way, it's almost like, to me, it feels like China is uh, committing economic warfare against us. Absolutely. That's, that's what I think. And I've been saying that for a long time. People who watch this show know that I'm very critical of China and I blame them 100% for this thing. They, 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 they isolated their military in late November. So that's when it broke out. Um, they got, you know, you don't want to keep, get your guys with guns sick, right? Cause they're going right. to be protecting you. And um, they also did a, um, they did a, a analysis a couple of years ago, the Chinese communist party, and about what the worst problems that China faces. And the number one worst problem that they face is overpopulation of elder people. Because mm -hmm. of the one child policy, they now have a society that's upended. It has mm -hmm. a huge amount of people that are old and nobody young to create production to feed the people who aren't producing anymore, just consuming. And I think China, and I don't think it's a coincidence that this disease likes to grab people that are over 60 mm -hmm. and in compromised health. And that's so important to remember in compromised health. If mm -hmm. your health is in compromise, you're probably going to be okay. It's right. only if you've got something. And right. 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 And this actually um, aligns with the, uh, the death rate in Italy and the death rate in Italy was uh, tremendous with people over the age of 80. It was something like 85% of the fatalities in Italy were uh, with people that are over 80. And Italy's got the oldest population in Europe. And also Italy. I love Italy. I was just there a few months ago. And Italy has um, this kind of society where the family meets at like 7 o'clock and grandma's there and the little kids are there and the cousins. And they eat for like three hours right? Conversing and talking and singing. And it's a wonderful culture, but it's, you know, for spreading diseases, it's actually a pretty, it's a fairly perfect culture for it. So, um, yeah. uh, you know, I like to say that um, the reason that people are cold in Sweden is because they can catch a cold in the cold. So mm -hmm. when it's cold, the last thing you want to get is a cold. So therefore, you're going to start treating people coldly because you don't want them nearby you so you don't get infected. And that is, you know, the Swedes don't know what they're doing. They know that you stay, you know, four or five feet away from each other and you don't get intimate unless you're pretty sure you've checked everything out and, um, and, and you make sure that the kids stay isolated if they get sick. 
So, mm -hmm. um, and also take a sauna. They invented saunas for that reason too, because it gives you a fake high temperature. And the, high right. the, um, the uh, protein molecule in the virus, in the coronavirus, will not break until it hits about 101 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then it'll break. So if you can get into a sauna for 20 minutes at 105 degrees, that'll help you out too. But I, yep. think, I think this thing is overblown, and I think it's designed to get Trump out of office. Well, I mean, it has all the, uh, ear, has all the markings of that, right? I mean, let's go back to China for a second. I just wanted, there was a point I wanted to follow up with you. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, clearly, um, I believe China was aided and abetted at a very high level with this thing, uh, at a global level, right? Go back and look at the Bolshevik Revolution, 1917. There's the blueprint for everything. You know, who was behind that? It was the bankers from New York, uh, you know, uh, basically funding everything, yep. you know, sending Trotsky over to, you know, from New York to the Soviet, you know, then Russia with millions and millions of dollars, a lot of it in precious metals, right? So she got pulled over in Luxembourg on a train and mm -hmm. uh, they opened up the thing and there was uh, literally millions and millions of dollars and they let him go. That's right. That's right. It, it, yep. And um, so the same people are probably very invested in China as sort of the new, uh, the new model, the new social model. Definitely. And, and, um, and so, so they've been aided and abetted at a high level. And then I think that's what we're looking at globally. Because, like I said, you know, China's doing business now. You know, you can't go to, you can't go to Disney Orlando. You can't go to Disney uh, uh, Southern California. But you could go to Disney China. Like, that's yeah. open. Not that I'd want to go to Disney anyway, but that gives you, it gives you an idea of what's going on. So, all of a sudden now, after 311, which is the new 911, as far as I'm concerned, the switch has been flipped. We've now become this de facto kind of top-down Soviet styled directive state and China is now back back in business. They're buying Apple. They're going to China Disney. Hello. What's happened here? Yeah, that's a very interesting observation. I haven't really thought about that. So China's on uh, online and we're offline. That's right. Isn't that incredible? And, yeah. And and also, I mean, they have all the ingredients for the prescriptions and we're going to be running out of prescriptions here in about two weeks. And there's a lot of people on meds that are going to lose their, you know, lose their shit. And, and, you know, um, I, I always have to kind of go down the diabolical hole, right? So let's just say China uh, continues to produce uh, prescriptions and drugs. There, there's no guarantee that the drugs and the prescriptions they're producing will be the same drugs or prescriptions or they may actually be harmful to people. And I'm not here to spread fear, oh. but, we have, but we have to understand who we're dealing with here. That's a, that's a pretty heavy thought. I had not thought about it, but I, I do know this. I do not trust the Chinese government at all. Not one bit. No, absolutely not. And it's really interesting because Trump was nothing burger, nothing burger, nothing burger. And then boom, the 180, you know, we got hit with the 180 yesterday. Yeah. And that's not so unlike Trump. We, we've seen him do stuff like that before. That's kind of part of who he is. And then people say, well, he's got to do this. We got to give him a pass. And, and sometimes it actually, it actually kind of works. Like people thought that he was going to go hog wild on, on uh, Iran, but he didn't. No, he didn't. You know, he, he did some kind of like capitulation thing and then it, it quieted down. Right. He went after Soleimani and then pfft, nothing. Right. Yeah. So is this another Trump capitulation or is this Trump being forced into playing ball with these directives, which are in, in, in a sense, corralling us and, and putting us in these um, self-isolation pens? It's going to be interesting. I think we're going to find out all we're going to need to know about Donald Trump in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Uh, I would agree with you. And, you know, who knows? He was put in to stop China. I know that. And he did. But the backlash that Trump has been getting ever since he's been in office, I believe, is being financed by the Chinese. And I believe that they're, uh, I even believe Bloomberg had to run because the Chinese told him, you've got to do whatever you can do to stop him. And so he had to give $150 million or whatever it was to uh, try to stop Trump and he will uh, give more. And also, I believe that Pelosi, uh, I know that she and her husband have made millions doing business in China. So mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> these people are in debt to uh, China. And, and isn't it interesting, like, sort of the linchpin of this whole thing was the NBA. Wow. Like, everything starts. The first domino drops when the NBA cancels its season. Yep. And the NBA is balls deep into China. Absolutely. Look at what LeBron said about it. Yep. Right? As you yep. said, their, their revenue was, was going down after they made those pro-Chinese comments. Mm -hmm. uh, the players and uh, uh, yeah, I think this is some kind of big move by China. I think they're going to get rid of their old people. Uh, it's going to be a little side Benny that they're going to get, so they don't have the, you know so many people to feed, and that there's and the dissidents are going to disappear. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they died of coronavirus. Oh, it's too bad, right? Just like that doctor Lee that uh, called him out, and then he died, right? And he said the incompetent, right. amazing, and. Uh, this, but the other thing is this crisis really does show how incompetent communism is because everyone was afraid to tell their superior bad news because they're afraid they're going to mm -hmm. get killed. So nobody was telling anybody anything. And finally it was just too late, right? And mm -hmm. by the time it was too late, it had spread everywhere. The Chinese new year had happened. So everyone was taking off with the disease and spreading it like wildfire and uh, you, have to under, you have to wonder if China, what, why China didn't do something really fast. Why did they isolate their military in late November, but not tell the world until mid-January? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. And I think it's kind of self-explanatory when you really look at it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so Trump, is, Trump must know what's going on. He must know that everything's on the line. So you're right. We'll find mm -hmm. out everything about him here right, real soon next 30 to 60 days it's going to be pretty evident to see who's on what side and um you, you know this gets us into this whole uh, pluto saturn capricorn conjunction piece and um kind of what's going on you the south node has been in, in capricorn as well and it's getting ready to transition um out of uh capricorn and move into sagittarius at the end of may with the true node moving into uh, Gemini uh, at the end of May as well. And that's a that's a pole shift in terms of our awareness and the energetic output for what's going on. And the South Node in Sag Sagittarius rules laws in a rule, and it's a sign that's invested in freedom. So if we have the South Node in Sagittarius, which is theoretically vulnerable and represents the past, right? This could be indicative of um, a certain amount of uh, freedom and, and mobility uh, kind of coming to an end for this next nodal cycle. Uh, the true note in Gemini really supports things like um, telecommuting, learning at home. It's all internet based stuff. You know, so we're also going to be seeing more and more people theoretically. Like, I don't think this is going to go away. I think, I think that we're witnessing kind of the next model and the next iteration of where people are going to do things and how they're going to do things. And this, and this is, this is paving the way for automation. That's the other thing that people aren't talking about is the robots, the robots in the wings, the robots in waiting. They don't you get know, sick. No. And, and um, uh, I don't know if you've been following this, but Amazon laid off like 5,000 of its delivery people. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Can you say drone? Right? Yeah. Here come the drones. The drones dropping food. The drones dropping medicine. So this, so this is – we're being moved into – you know, Toffler's, what is it, um, third, third wave. wave. They, we're being moved right into Toffler's third wave right now. That's and, it, yeah, and removing the human component. So Gemini is going to play a big role. But the thing I like about Gemini is that it's a trickster. And and uh, people are going to find out workarounds. And it's going to be a really interesting test to see how Americans deal with uh, extended quarantines. And I was listening to uh, Cuomo last night on Fox News. And he says this could go on to six, seven, eight, nine months. How do you think Americans are going to do six, seven, eight, nine months of this shit? They, they won't. We're too rebellious. Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, I agree with you that, the, that you can see some of the obvious things in, in, the, in the reset. For instance, um, I, I, I actually don't think it's an accident that the college campuses have been turned so um, toxic in the last few years. And, uh, uh, and people are reticent to send their kids to college. And just as that is happening, this happens. Right. And now everybody in Stanford and Harvard and MIT and a bunch of others are doing everything online, right? 
So you're also, you're getting it online. You're avoiding the toxic culture in the campus. And um, that, you know, the, it, so there's our side bennies here that are actually good is what I'm trying to say. And the same thing with school. <clears throat> why, why have your kid go to a school to learn biology from a teacher who studied biology, you know, as a, as a secondary subject in, in school, when you can go online and have the best biology teacher on earth teach your kid, right? Mm -hmm. That's where this is going. There's going to be rock star teachers that parents are going to want their kids to be on their online courses so they can put it in their resume that this, my kid took, you know, the biology from this guy and, and you got an A, you know, in the course. And, and so the schools are going to die, but not just school campuses, I mean, are going to die. Uh, not totally medicine and engineering need to have hands on experience, but most mm -hmm. courses you can take from home. The other mm -hmm. thing is, and this is a real benefit, and I can speak from personal experience, corporations are run by people that are around my age. Okay, most corporations on, on, in the United States are run by guys around my age. And guys around my age are, I hate to say it, they're old fashioned, they want to control everything, and they want everybody to be at work with them in their mm -hmm. corporation. And no matter how many times I've argued with them uh, that this is not a good idea, that let people work from home, and it's much easier on them. It's a 20% raise, by the way, to work from home. Mm -hmm. That's how much you save in money, just driving mm -hmm. and eating out at lunch and all the other stuff. And um, three of the corporations that I've worked at in the past 25 years have now, for the first time, had their people working from home right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm going to, uh, everyone who's working at home, work twice as hard than you normally would. So we can make this part of our culture. We can stop the traffic jams. We can stop all of that by, ha by yeah. just changing this little tiny thing in our culture of everybody just work from home. You know, you can meet on Zoom like we're doing right now. We don't need mm -hmm. any of this interaction. And, um, you know, we can use the campuses to put up for the sick people or the homeless or whatever. But yeah. I think it's over. I think that people are going to get so used to this. Just think about it. People are staying home because the kids have but can't go to school, right? So the parents now have to stay at home to take care of the kids who aren't at school. So yeah, that's a very, it's a very cancerian thing. And it gets right back into the nodes again, you know, with the true node in cancer right around three degrees right now. And those final degrees are really the most potent manifestation of the potentiality of that sign. So we're, we, we've been really by the Capricorn cancer axis, right? Capricorn says, you cannot do this. Cancer says, we're going to bring it home. And that's kind of where we are right now. And I'd like to add to that, Jay, in that um, when the smoke clears and theoretically um, the all clear sign is back on in society, I would urge people not to go back. That's exactly where I'm coming from. I, I, I'm saying, first off, let's prove that working away from the office increases production because I yeah. believe it does. Yeah, uh, sure. I was a copywriter for years. I wrote scripts and stuff. And uh, and th th they would make me write scripts in an office. And it's like, it's just not a conducive atmosphere for that. And so, uh, you know, I'd fake like I was sick and I'd come home, put on some classical music and, you know, and then I would, you know, and I'd be in my robe and I'd have my laptop and I could mm -hmm. write and freely write. And, and just, it was, you know, I could create my own creative environment instead of living in the creative environment of the CEO of the corporation. I'm which is not creative at all. Which is not creative at all. And yeah. so I, I, I encourage everybody to not go back. That's really yeah. thinking. Let's not yeah. go back. Let's not go back. I mean, they've, they've said this is, you know, what we want moving forward. They're kind of moving us as a herd, right? Yep. They're moving us as a herd. Well, it's like, you know what? Thanks. You know, we really like this pen. We're not going back. Yeah. You know, you, you, can, you can keep that version of the world. And I, and, and, I, and I think that's really ultimately where it's, you know, I had a client this morning, wonderful woman, uh, in her 60s, and, and, um, and being forced to work because she has to. Yep. Right? And she works for the state of Texas, and she lives in um, New Braunfels, and she has to commute to Austin, and that's a 
that is a doomsday commute. It's a total doomsday commute. Yeah. And guess what? She gets to stay home and work now. Like the best thing that's ever happened to her. Absolutely. She'll get, what, another hour or two hours a day of her life back? Yep. yep. And it's not just the hours. It's the quality of life in those hours, which yeah. are stressful, raise, raise cortisol levels, all this other stuff that goes along with it. Absolutely. And uh, uh, I think that if we're going to do the reset, then let's go back. I, my philosophy is that we take all the gifts of high technology and we take them back to the farm. That's really what I think. I think we need to start thinking of moving into more rural areas, growing your own food like I do, and um, just it, it's just a much better life. And uh, I, I can still talk to Robert almost face to face. I live in the middle of nowhere and uh, put on shows and, and let's use our technology, but let's go back to our family. I really like that idea uh, of, of that. And uh, so maybe some things in this reset will be better. I, I would agree if people are informed and not being uh, driven and run by fear and panic and the dominant, the dominant program, and we have to unplug from the dominant program. Like I was watching Fox News last night and two things. Uh, well, I had to. I wanted to find out what was being talked about yeah. on, at that, that kind of a level. And the dominant program, from what I can ascertain, is that the testing thing is going to be pretty much mandatory. Um, the, the vaccine piece is really big, really big, because that's the other thing, right? People are, are waking up to the dangers of vaccines. And, and Dell Bigtree has been like the freaking Babe Ruth of vaccines. Like he's suing the CDC. There's a ton going on there. So they're in a struggle to dominate the vaccine narrative. So, why, so what would be a, a, a really good antidote to that, right? And the antidote to that would be to create this thing, coronavirus, and come up with the vaccine that stamps out this thing that threatens the, uh, the, the, you know, the sanctity and the health of the West. Oh, see, vaccines work. See, vac you know, we were right. All you anti-vaxxers, you know, just, just shut the fuck up. And from here on out, if you say anything, you're in deep, deep shit. The other thing is that there, there is an attack now going on on alternative health. Like that is a big piece around all of this. Uh, Jim Baker, uh, the, you know the, uh, the 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 guy who was the Tammy Faye Jim Baker guy. Yep. Um, he's been telling people about the the efficacy of of colloidal silver, which is a really good thing, especially the the nano colloidal silver. Yep. And now he, now he's being told that he can't talk about that. Right? He can't talk about it. Alex Jones. Whatever you think of Alex Jones, some of his health products are actually really good. They are. That Dr. Krupp guy is a really good physician. Oh, yeah. I love and that. He's, he's a yeah, and, he, and, he, and he's behind. People don't realize he's behind almost all of Alex's products. Right. And he's got this toothpaste that has hydrogen and silver in it. And he's being told he can't sell that toothpaste now. So this is, this is an, an attack, a full frontal attack on alternative health, personal sovereignty, and people being able to take care of themselves. It's like, shut the fuck up. We'll take care of you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, they're going to say to you that you can't fly if you haven't taken the vaccine. I guarantee That's right. It. I guarantee it. That's right. So I, I'm advocating that people be smart. Like, you know, take care of yourself. Don't, you know, practice some social distancing. You take care of your body. Stay clean. Take care of your in, your immune system, right? But yeah. other than that, other than that, it's like I'm not sure how much I really want to be buy into this dominant paradigm mind virus, and because I think it's really dangerous. Right. When you say mind virus, you mean like they're using manipulating us with it? Absolutely. It's a crown, right? It's the crown. The corona is the crown, right. and it's a mind virus. You know, it's like what? Well, you know, we have a toilet paper crisis. You know, that's going down, you know, people, you know, somebody coughs or sneezes, you look around, and, you know, it's like, oh, shit, it's triggering, it's programming, it's all fear-based, it's incredibly fear-based. Yep. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just sick and tired of, like, state-sponsored creeps, you know, determining, you know, who and what we are and what we can do. And I think this is a real fork in the road for us. I would agree with that, and uh, I don't know where it's going to go. Um I know that uh, they're going to use it as a, a, a the lead foot on our head, I'm afraid. 
and uh, you don't know where, where it's going to go. Um, what does the uh, what does the future astrology say? Like for say, you know, halfway through the year and then near the end of the year, what what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think we're right now. I, I want to talk a little bit about the cancellation of sports and cancel how it relates. Culture. to Yeah, cancel culture. I'm talking about the cancellation of sports in particular, um, as it relates to these Capricornian figures that we have to interact with. Right, this kind of like. Um, you know, this, this archonic Borg mindset, right? right. So, so th this time of year, our, our lives are marked by rituals, these kind of secularized rituals like the NBA playoffs, the Masters, March Madness. Right. So we don't have these things now that are um, part of our ca calendrical cycle in some ways, right? That's a really big deal because it disrupts these kinds of rhythms that we've become accustomed to. And that in and of itself is a little traumatic in some ways, right? The, but the big thing is, it's like, what, what do athletes represent? You know, athletes represent the hero. <laughs> athletes represent the hero, you know, the heroic. You know, the, 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 you know, we look up to the, the basketball players who can slam dunk something, or we look up to the John Daly's that can drive a golf ball 450 yards. We don't have those figures right now. So who do we have? Well, we've got these politicians. Right. So in a lot of ways, they've displaced these kind of athletic icons. Now they're the heroes in a time where these other guys are off the shelf. And athletics in football, and you know this because you and I relate at a similar level. Like I find football to be an interesting distraction. Right. I watch it. It's like it's like theater. There's some mythopoesis involved. You know, I like it. We don't have that now. We have no distractions. So what are we getting? We're getting the fuck, pardon my language, the freaking Corona channel 24 well, seven. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So this is all very Capricornian. And this gets into the Saturn Pluto conjunction and this coalescence of power that is connected to these uh, Capricornian figures, right? When I say Capricornian, I'm not, this is not dissing people that are Capricorn. It's, it's about, it's about what they represent institutionally government, corporations, the top of the pyramid, the half of the 1%. And they're, they're, what they're doing now is they're constellating power. That's what they're doing. They're constellating power. They're constellating their position. But there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a hole here. There's a hole in their program, and that's the south node. That south node is going to shift in June. So we have a bit of time here between now and the end of May to be able to get deeper into this cancerian peace inside of ourselves, which is how do we take care of each other? How do we take care of our homes? How do we take care of our family? How do we grow our own food? How do we, if let's say, for instance, we can't get colloidal silver and that's important to us, how are you going to make it, right? The whole idea of being able to craft and, and, and be self-sustaining, this is front and center for us right now. This is what we really need to wrap our heads around with those really Cancerian values. Now, Mars is currently in Capricorn. This is a really big deal because over the, between now and the end of the month, Mars is going to wind up conjuncting both Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, and Saturn, all in Capricorn. And we know Mars represents Marshall, right? It, it, it is the activation of energy and will. It is masculine. And when we have Mars in relationship to Capricorn, you know, we're looking at martial government application here. So my sources have told me that by midnight tomorrow night, we're going to be placed on medical martial law in this country. Whoa. Okay. Yep. What is that? And, and I've had it corroborated from a couple of different people. Uh, and Trump is going to probably announce it tomorrow. What so what it, what it means is, is that um, in your community, you will be very limited with what you can do. You'll be allowed to congregate in public, but not in more than groups of three. Uh, gasoline will probably be shut off. You won't be able to buy gas. And stores will be open. Because stores will be open. Handle, you mean because of the handles on the gas? Because 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 the handle, and they also going to want they're going to want to limit movement. Right. They don't want you running around, quote unquote, spreading. Right. Yep. 
And then uh, stores will be open, but only during limited hours. And then when you go in and out of a store, there will be some very stringent um, disinfecting uh, applications involved. Uh, I expect that to be ramped up at some point. And then it won't be disinfecting. If you want to go into a store, you're going to have to take a coronavirus test. Because the uh, because Trump just initiated, what is this, uh, the Stafford Act? Yeah, the Emergency Act. Right. So what that means is that they can throw money at stuff. So all these companies now are getting government money to come up with these kits. And these kits will be ubiquitous. And like you and I were talking beforehand, if, um, if you don't even test positive, but somebody else in your circle does, uh, that makes you a uh, target makes you a person of interest. And so if you test positive for, for Corona, uh, the mild case would be, you know, you stay in your apartment or your home. Uh, the not so mild cases, they take you out of circulation. So this is kind of what we're staring down here in the immediate, in the next, you know, after, after Monday. And um, I, I heard about this a few days ago. Uh, I posted on Facebook and then I have a, a, a nurse friend who is living in North Carolina and basically, she, her, she has a son who's incarcerated. And she said that after, after Sunday, she won't be able to see her son until they give the, uh, you know, the, the green light. So that's corroborating. There's going to be an extended um, uh, limitation on travel and activity. So this is, this is where we're headed. And my feeling about this is that I, I really feel like people need to unplug from the mainstream narrative around coronavirus. And that doesn't mean you put your head in the sand. Uh, there are plenty of alternative, really interesting alternative pieces, but you got to be really selective even with the alternative stuff. Because, because there are alternative um, channels, agents, you know this, Jay, right? They're, they're, they're trolls, they're LARPs, they're agent provocateurs, so you got to be really selective. But unplug from the dominant paradigm, because then we feed, we feed it, and we can't feed this thing. Chris Martinson is pretty good. He's got a YouTube channel called Peak Prosperity, and he's been pretty real with it and very critical of everybody, which we should be. Everybody, we, all of our leaders have been exposed, all leaders everywhere are mm -hmm. exposed for how incompetent they are. But is it incompetence or is it the Great Reset? <clears throat> and it looks like it's the Great Reset. Yep. So we're looking at that and this thing can go either way, right? I mean, that's what's, that's where we're going to be when the true node goes into Gemini. Which way is this thing going to spin? And what day you does know, that happen? Uh, it's uh, May 29th. May 29th. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is an interesting time too, Jay, because we're in the final days of Pisces. You know, th you know we're about to go into the sign of Aries. Yep. But what's interesting about this time, yeah, more than Saturn is going into Aquarius. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to be moving into the Aquarian age by the end of this month. So what's that going to look like? Is it going to be one of these totalitarian top down? This is what's good for everybody. You better just shut up and take it. Or is it going to be, hey, look, we're going to fight for some level of autonomy, sovereignty, and we know what we're doing here. And thank you very much. Right. This is where we're headed. And again, Mars plays a big role. Because Mars is going to conjunct Saturn, you know, not just in um, not just in Capricorn, but also in Aquarius. And when you get Mars-Saturn conjunctions, think of driving with the driving with your foot on the accelerator and your foot on the brake. That's the energy. It's going to be the I'd say the next three weeks, next three to four weeks is going to be one of the most pivotal times in the history of this country. And people better be really, really clear about who they are, where they are, and what their mindset is. I think mindset is everything around this. Yeah. And, um, you know, I did hear, though, uh, some rumors coming out of Wuhan that it does attack the central nervous system, too. So, I mean, we don't know that yet. But it'll be interesting to see what happens to Tom Hanks because he's in his 60s. And he's got it. And if he comes out fine in a week, I think a lot of people will be relieved. And I think then a lot of the, uh, the bad vibes going on about it will start to dissipate. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. that they can go out. Here's the thing I, I don't understand. Why not test the members of the teams in the NBA? If they're all test negative, then you can have your game. You just don't have to have anybody watching in the stands. And you just have it on TV, <clears throat> right? They could play the game still. Um, same thing with golf, yeah. especially golf, right? So what if there's no crowds around Tiger Woods? We don't care, right? We're, we didn't come to watch them anyway. We came to watch him, right? So he, he can be tested. If he's okay, then he can go out there and, and play. So th th you're right. They don't have to do this. This goes back to a conversation that you and I had. I think it might have been our last show, and I talked about the, you know, the Fortune 200 companies, and they all had that roundtable, and I sent you that link. Oh, and yeah. and the top down decisions. This is a top down across the board decision that everybody just agreed to, and it smacks of that kind of um, collusion to use a sports term, right? Yep. Well, yeah. you know, I, you know, we know there was a Swiss study done in two thousand seven uh, that the uh, was a, a bunch of uh, I think it was a uh, Zurich. University of Zurich, and they did a study to disprove the conspiracy theorists, theorists. And so they looked at major corporations and they looked at the leaders of the corporations and they put them all together and they realized that, what, 80, 80 people run 75% of the corporations on earth. They're interlocking directorships. So one guy just goes from one director meeting to another meeting to another meeting. And so they're all colluding on a daily basis. And, and this, this study proved it. You know, the, the major media squashed the study, but you can Google it. Google in Swiss study 2007, conspiracy theorists proven right. And you'll see that very few males, and they're all males, run this probe. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you if you want to go down the kind of conspiratorial deep rabbit hole and trust me, you'll have some you'll have plenty of time to uh, to, to go down the rabbit hole. Uh, do a deep dive into Anthony Sutton oh, and yeah. Ant A Anthony Sutton was the guy that broke the code around skull and bones. Yeah. Uh, and he was a, a professor at Stanford and he went in through uh, sort of a research door at Stanford. And, and he walked out the other side doing live events with Elizabeth Clare Prophet. I mean, just wrap your head around that. Yeah. Yeah, she was a, she, she knew a lot, actually. I used to... She uh, knew a hell of a lot. People yeah. dissed her, but she was on it, man. She was. And she, she knew all about uh, alchemy and Fulcanelli. I mean, we used to talk, and she could just talk my ear off. She knew everything. And she was really into all of this stuff that we talk about. And uh, that's why she was attacked because she was talking about this stuff in public 30 years ago, right? Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah so the so bad part of this is that we're going to, we could be in a, a totalitarian dictatorship at the end of this. Uh, and the good thing about it is that we could maybe spend more time with our families because of uh, the isolation part of it. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I, and I think that, um, at least for me, um, sort of the, the, the golden mean or the gold, golden ratio with this whole event is how are we treating other people? Yep. You know, are we going to be reflexive and are we going to snap or lash out or defend our position because we think or we know that we're right? Uh, I don't think that's a really, really good uh, practice right now. No, and we need to treat each other a lot more kindly than we have been. And, um, and we need to help each other because there's a lot of fear out there. And we also need to um, really go out of our way to be nice because this is, that's why I'm so disgusted with the politicians because they're still, uh, you know, if, if everything is, is at risk, like they're saying, they're certainly not acting like it. You know, they're acting with, they're still with their duplicitous mannerisms and not going to cooperate with each other. And it's like, that is not what we need right now. And so I'm hoping, and by the way, I'm not sure there's going to be an election. Oh, I've been talking about there for months. I mean, I, I, I was, I was on the non-election train last year and I started, you know, if you look at the chart for election night, it's one of the worst charts I've ever seen. Really? It's bloody. Oh, it's blood. Absolutely. It's absolutely bloody. And the other thing that, that really grabbed my attention is this eclipse that's coming on July 5th. And, you know, it's right on the, the birth, the birthday of the United States. 
Right. And, I, and, and I think that that eclipse is going to be kind of a landmark eclipse. And, you, you know, we're also running into the Pluto return of the United States, where the country winds up becoming something different. You know, it comes back to where it was in 1776 when, you know, they basically, you know, signed the ledger sheet for this thing that we're in. So we're, we're in a time now that uh, the, there's, no, there's no going back at this point. You know, and whatever, whatever world is created on the other side of this, a lot of that will have to do with who we are now, what we are now, how we interact with each other now, because it will define the quality of where this thing is headed. And um, I think that's really important. And we got to start treating each other like we're family. You know, this is the big thing. You know, ex extend, extend the family um, the sentiments, and extend the family courtesies to the world around you. Be nice to people. They're your brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. We are each other's keepers. And if you're a prepper like me, um, don't be selfish. Um, yeah. you know, I've got a lot of toilet paper, for instance, and I have had a lot of toilet paper for like a year. And right. help people out. Sure, they'll pay you back later. Believe me, there are uh, karma will pay you back. And, um, and, and yeah, I think kindness. I really think that that's what we have to start practicing. We somehow social media has turned us into kind of monsters and it has. and and we've got to stop it and i think maybe this will be the the thing that breaks that and the other thing is um it, that really needs to be said is that you know bill gates did a trial run on this exact uh, disease you know months before and mm -hmm. we know he's very interested in depopulation right yep. One of his uh, big priorities is depopulating the world. And, um, and he's working with some very high up people. And um, you got to wonder, you just really got to wonder if this isn't a way to get rid of dissidents and old people. I mean, everywhere. Well, this goes back to the reset where we started our conversation in Tartaria. You know, yeah. what is this, what, what is this uh, so-called um, virus and affliction not affecting children? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That should not happen because their immune it, systems haven't developed. Well, what's interesting about the kids is that they have the thymus. And apparently the thymus is deactivated by um, uh, over time. And, and apparently, and I can't vouch for this, but this is what I've read, that certain vaccinations will deactivate the thymus. So it's not one of those things where, well, you get to a certain age and the thymus shuts down. No, the thymus is supposed to be active all the way throughout your life. And kids have much better thymus glands um, than, than, than adults do. But if you go back and look at some of the stuff with Tartaria and the reset and the orphans and the orphan trains, hello, where are we? Where are what we? is this thing looking like, right? Right. Lots of orphans being created. Possibly. Right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Ooh, man, that guy be chills. Whoa. Yeah. So we're, we're and again, you know, we're in a reset. What's it going to look like? How's it going to, how's it going to manifest? I mean, the good thing is, is that we have a lot of awareness. We have more awareness now than I think at any other time in recorded history. Great. It's what we do with it. That's, 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 I think the, the, the litmus. All right. So what are your suggestions for how to get through this, Robert? I'd say unplug from the dominant, dominant narrative around coronavirus get out of any mainstream um talk around it it's only going to lock you in and feed their program that doesn't mean you stick your head in the sand you find sources that you like try to stay informed try to stay aware take care of the people in your immediate sphere be kinder and gentler to one another let's not use our humanity lose our humanity let's use our humanity to become channels for divinity and allow this thing this 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 this, this logos to, to live within us and become an active participant and agent in our daily affairs. And as a result of that, you know, we're going to influence situations that are going to be more powerful than any, any uh, rifle or any pistol or any weapon that we have at our disposal. And that's what we need to do. And we need to hold on to that and really claim that this is it. There's no, there's no other time. This is where we are now. Yeah, and medical and martial law may be uh, coming our way very soon. So the sobering reality of it all. Yep. So what do you think, Jay? I mean, I just laid out what I think. What do you think people should do? Well, 
I think that they need to take it more seriously. Um, I think that they need to take the ramifications of it more seriously. I think that the way that China reacted to it uh, means something. I don't know what, but uh, it was such an overreaction that it, it, it means something. And uh, I don't know if it means that the disease is as bad as they're saying, but or if they're using the disease as an excuse to carry out some political matter matters. But either way, it means something. And I think we need to look at that. I think 5G is also the wild card in this. Yeah. And, you know, that, that there was um, uh, a big rollout with 5G in Wuhan. So there's, there, you know, a lot of people have made this connection between uh, 5G and the sort of the activation and how it basically robs your body of oxygen, right? Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, the rollout of radio, regular radio, was in 1916, uh, 1917, was the big rollout of radio, and the Spanish flu hit in 1918. And um, when they first, Pat, um, I forget his name now, the pyramid guy, Pat, um, I'll remember his name. He told me that when, the, uh, when farmers in the Midwest first got radio in like 1918, uh, that they reported their animals and they themselves were sick uh, for the first two or three years. And these were Interesting. complaints all over the country. Uh, people were complaining about getting sick from the radio. And then eventually we just got used to it. Uh, and, but it, it does affect these RF waves do affect us at low levels. And I think we have to respect that. <clears throat> Where I live, I purposely live in a place that has really lousy, you know, um, RF uh, uh, around me. And so there isn't hardly any, and it's noticeable, seriously mm -hmm. noticeable. I mean, you, can, you feel lighter. And then when you go, when I go to the city where I'm getting buzzed, I feel heavier. I feel like I weigh more. And mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> so there, it really does affect you. And, uh, and Wuhan was one of the first country, uh, cities in the world to have the 5G rollout. And so, you know, you don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe a low-level coronavirus, which exists anyway, just got mm -hmm. exacerbated by this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's that. That's that's that's, that's some of the stuff. I'm, yeah, that's some of the stuff that I've been I've been um, reading. People are connecting some of those dots. So yeah, you yeah, know, it's really I, interesting about, about about your your experience in the country and and feeling lighter. I remember going across the border from Washington state to Canada and almost instantly I felt yeah. different. Exactly. I did the same thing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wow, man, I like this. <laughs> this I, feels I was, good. I was in the Olympic national park one day years ago and I had the radio on in my car and the news came on. I don't where it was, you know, I wasn't sure what I was listening to. And the news came on and said, uh, uh, the government has cut the military budget by 15%. Um, we're providing free health care for everyone. And I was like, you know, what? What are they listening to? And then this is a Canadian radio. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was completely opposite of the United States, right? And uh, yeah. so, yeah, Canada, I felt the same thing. When I go into Canada, I'd feel, feel suddenly at peace again. And I was just in Costa Rica. We felt the same thing. I was like, wait a minute, well, well, there's no drama here. There's like, uh, everybody don't, they don't even have on their cable, at least at my hotel, they didn't even have Fox, CNN, uh, MSNBC. They had American TV stations, but for some reason they didn't have any of those. And I went to the manager and I said, how come you guys don't have like Fox and MSNBC? And she, oh, no, no, we want you guys to be called. So. Right. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I think this could be a real opportunity for people, real opportunity for us. We just got to stay out of like the root chakra dungeon, you know, where everybody's looking after themselves, dominated by fear, right? We've got to, we got to get out of that place and really come from our hearts during this time. And, and let's not forget that, you know, these guys at the top, they like to do tests. They don't like mm -hmm. to do massive rollouts until they've tested things. I personally believe that the USSR was a test. 
It was a test mm -hmm. to see how what what would go good, what would go bad in a communist society, and the you know the test didn't go very well. I believe that um, Germany in the 1940s was a test. I believe everything happened. I'm not saying that there weren't people killed or anything. I'm just saying that it was also a test. It was a test to see right. how fast you could ramp up an economy. It was a test to see how well uh, 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 preaching racial superiority would go over, right, for maybe a later date when uh, a group will take over and, and, and they will know now how to deal when they claim racial superiority. They'll now know how to uh, handle it cognitively and mind control wise. So this is a test. This is a test to find out how well we obey orders, how well we'll stay at home, will we do everything they tell us to do. And, um, and so what is the test for? The test is for the reset, mm -hmm. the final mm -hmm. reset, when, we, when they change everything over. You think the elites like traffic jams, polluted air? Um, no, and the, the solution is have everybody stay at home and work from home. Mm. And that's what they want. They want schools to, they made the toxic culture in colleges so that you wouldn't want to send your kids to college. So when they put in the online stuff, which they're going to do right now, and they're doing it right now, uh, before he got really ill, I heard Jordan Peterson was had a corporation which was going to do this. It was going to mm -hmm. do the best uh, teachers in the world and create an online corporation where, you know, uh, and, and give it away for free. In other words, they could pay for it with ads. But mm -hmm. you know, so we don't know where this is going. And um, so the last thing before we go, Robert, is what do the stars read for the end of this year? Where are we going to be at the end of 2020? So the end of 2020, we have the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. And uh, these uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions Ooh. are 20 year, 20 year cycles, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so we are going to be staring down the potential for either the um, the digital gulag, uh, which is you know part and parcel of this you know Aquarian thing, yeah. or we're going to be staring down um, the expansion of our relationship to very limiting factors that other people are be are determining. So this is going to get real interesting by the end of the year, and that even includes uh, the uh, so-called election uh, that may or may. But I think what will probably happen, Jay is I think the election will probably be people voting at home, right? I think this goes along with this uh, yeah. at home thing. Yeah. So, so how are they going to know who you are? How are they going to determine if you're a registered voter? I don't know. I have to give them my something, an ID system. Right. I scan. With the camera right there, wow. right, which then get, which then brings us into a society without hard money, which is coming, by the way. Yep, yep, yep. Get yep. ready, boys and girls. This is it, man. We're on it. And I just want to say real quick before you and I sign off that your test run uh, examples are, are brilliant, really brilliant. And and there's one more I'd like to add to that model, and that's Gaza. That's another test. Right, that is. Yep, and, and I and I was talking to a good friend uh, at last uh, yesterday, and it was like we're you know we could be looking about at the Gazification of the planet. If you look at Gaza, Whoa. they go without resources. There's checkpoints everywhere, right? And just when they kind of get on their feet, all of a sudden they're kind of leveled back about fifty years. So this is a this is another model that I think people need to need to contemplate. I would agree with you. That is a test. I'd never thought of it because I could never figure out why the Israelis just don't give each Palestinian a hundred thousand dollars and say, you know, go live somewhere else. Right. I mean, you can actually, <laughs> right. you can actually get this done peacefully. Right. I mean, yeah. they have the money uh, for sure. Right. right. It didn't really yeah. cost that much. It costs maybe a billion dollars. The United States gives them $5 billion a year anyway. Just use the right. that pay off the Palestinians, let those poor people go. But no, they got to keep them there in this kind of test situation and testing to see their resilience and how well they can stand up to it and all the rest. Hey, it, uh, seemed, to, it seemed to work out okay for the Armenians, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, they're running LA right now, you know? Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah. They're, they're very efficient people. Um, yep. Yeah. So, you know, Robert, I'd like to have you back again uh, around the uh, June, maybe. And I'd like to just to review everything. But I also would like to have you back because you have a, a brilliant thesis about the dark side of the Aquarian age. And I'd like to get you back and talk about that because we've always think of the Aquarian age as going to be this glorious time and the age of Aquarius and all these great things are going to happen, but you've got a great take on it. And I want to get you back to talk about that. Yeah, that was, I, I really busted it out when we were at Gaia. We did. And that, that was, that was, that was one of the shows I did at Gaia. So I'd be happy to talk about that. And, you know, it, I actually, this has been a really interesting time working with people astrologically. And one of the things about astrology is that it's not really, you know, most of the time people come to you and say, well, I want to talk about my career, or I want to talk about my relationships, I want to talk about my health, right? But astrology really gets down into the soul. And, you know, and this is actually a really, really good time to look into astrology, to find out what the deeper patterns are, kind of what's happening in the world, in your life. And clearly, I'm available to help people with that. And so this is link. not... I'll put the link in yep. the description so you can contact yep. and, Robert. And, and, and one more thing before I, before I get out of here. I did like a Mercury retrograde special uh, a couple of weeks ago, and people were very, um, uh, you know, responded to that. I'm going to do a coronavirus special okay. and make it, e make it easy for people to come in and get a reading. So I'll have that up. I'll have that up for as long as we need it. Like, I'm just going to roll everything back, get in the door, and let me help you. Yeah, and you can get, uh, just uh, uh, YouTube Robert Phoenix and watch his show on a daily basis or a weekly basis. I do. He's got a number of very interesting shows rolling around. And um, it's always great to get your perspective, Robert, because you're, uh, you're a realist, but you're also an astrologer. And that's a rare, usually astrologers are a little bit prone to fantasies. And you don't appear to me to be doing that. And you're your hit rate is amazing. You told me a year and a half before I got deathly ill that it would ha it was coming, and I didn't believe you, and I did get deathly ill, and um, and you called this one too. You called it. You called it on my show. So I don't know how you can deny it. Just go back and look at our last show, and he called it. That's it. Period. Well, it's yeah, it's uh, it's the Virgo with me, Jay. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep doing it. Hey, thank you again, and I really Thanks, appreciate Robert. all the I really appreciate all the work you're doing too. You bet, man. Thanks so much.